In this video, I want to talk about the effect circumcision has had on me personally. Um, I was circumcised as an infant. Uh, I didn't even know that I was circumcised until I was about nine years old. Uh, I was told by my mother and when she revealed this to me, she laughed at the shock on my face. Uh, it was so shocking to me. Uh, it was just a <clears throat> very surreal feeling to discover that I was somehow purposely made to be different. And uh, what made it worse is I didn't even understand why or, I mean, there was no real reason uh, for it. Uh, so I didn't understand why and, you know, or even what took place, you know. But um, I know subconsciously I just began hating every thought that crossed my mind about the subject. After I was told, um, I became overly obsessed with looking at my penis, trying to figure out uh, what happened to me. Uh, and I also became uh, extremely self-conscious about what others thought. Uh, I mean, I was literally, I was thinking about it so much that I imagined that everyone was thinking about it. And so it was like everyone was looking at me. It was, it was a very bizarre kind of feeling. Um, the scar from my circumcision became this permanent reminder that I was uh, assaulted, you know, sexually. Um, I wouldn't make that connection probably until later uh, this, that it was a sexual assault of some kind um, because I wasn't really thinking about sex uh, when I was nine years old. Uh, I just thought that, you know, uh, I was assaulted. But, um, you know, as you mature and you, uh, you become a, a sexual being, um, you can't help but uh, link sexuality with the with with the the assault. Um, you can't help it. Um, I remember, like right after I was told, uh, trying to find information at the library, like before the uh, computer age, and it was just impossible. <clears throat> um, back then. Uh, talking to a librarian about a subject like that, they would have said, you know, that's beyond your age range. You shouldn't be looking at stuff like that. They were constantly looking over your shoulder, that sort of thing. So they kept you in the kids sections, basically, you know, they didn't, and, and I almost never went to the kids sections. Um, <clears throat> but it was just impossible to find information on it. Uh, eventually, I ended up just putting it in the back of my mind and my, I guess my self-image was modified by it and uh, my self-esteem and, and uh, confidence were, I guess, diminished. Um, it, it, I was definitely different and uh, it has affected me like ever since. Um, I've always like overcompensated to present myself to the world as valuable in some way or another. And I believe that's directly related to how circumcision makes me feel about myself, even to this day. But uh, being circumcised, being circumcised, it makes me feel hurt. Uh, I feel betrayed, very sad. Uh, feel cheated, um, unworthy of protection. That that's a big one. Um, uh, not being worthy of protection from even your own parents. You hear a lot of times that people will die to protect their children, uh, but uh, it didn't take place. You know, when it came to this, I've had uh, very very vengeful feelings 
I guess. Feelings of vengeance. Uh, varying levels of madness. Uh, or, like, somehow spiraling down, you know? Um, I've actually had uh, these private conversations with myself in an attempt to protest, like, on behalf of my own body, you know? I, I secretly practice my defensive arguments as, uh, as if I were, like, a child about to undergo circumcision or directly after. Um, arguments that, you know, I guess I would make to somehow justify my humanness or advocate for myself in some way to, you know, try and change the hearts and minds of those that, you know, participated in hurting me. Because I, I can't undo what they did, though. I, I like, I, I somehow I always lose the arguments. I've, um... I've imagined, like, erasing my love and trust so that uh, they suffer a loss that can't be regained the same way I suffered a loss that can't be regained. Um, I tell the people that they gave up their right to be loved by me, and, you know, I withdraw it, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I just end up picturing them laughing at me because of, you know... I mean, how can someone erase their mother or their father? It just, uh, it, it, it causes me to spiral down even further at times. Um, I do it in private and I don't let anyone hear me because I don't want people to think I'm crazy. And so it, it makes it even more isolating than it already is. Um, I don't feel like there's anything like about my penis that f belongs to me. It, it belongs to those that cut me and society in general, I guess. Um, you know, every circumcision that just takes place, it's like I'm clearly told that what happened to me is a socially approved trauma of some kind. It's weird to say it, but it's, it's like, it's somehow disconnected from me. I've somehow in my mind, it's a, it's a disconnected uh, organ. And so, you know, I, I even go as far as telling myself, this is not mine. You know, it's, it's not mine. Uh, this was not meant to be mine, you know. I've, I've had all those conversations inside my head or just, you know, just talking to myself, I guess. <clears throat> I've had a sex life, but, um, you know, I don't know if I'll ever be able to say that it was good, uh, simply because I won't be able to experience it naturally, the way it was meant for me to experience. And so, uh, it just makes you not even like the idea of sex, you know? It's just, it has that effect. Um, oh, I, I feel like a certain jealousy of men who have not been circumcised. And yet at the exact same time, this is, you know, the part that gives me a lot of mixed emotions about it is that I'm happy for them also at the same time. Um, it becomes so difficult to talk about because, you know, People think it's funny or they support circumcision and don't want to believe anything outside of the, you know, the state-sponsored propaganda, I guess, associated with it. Um, any form of complaining brings, you know, you know, you risk being ridiculed. Uh, everyone tells me to just get over it. And uh, it, it's just really... It's just a, an amazing uh, feeling associated with it, how people, you know, treat it. People love to tell me I have these, you know, uh, I, I've been told this so many times, I have issues or that I have a problem with women 
when I bring it up because I talk about the beliefs that you know people hold about the opposite sex. And everything I say, it, it just gets deflected to something else. You know, someone else is suffering worse, so forget about what you're suffering about. It's just, it, 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 it's like you can't get someone to focus in on it. I don't feel like people will ever really listen. And so if I don't matter to society, then why participate in it? <laughs> I mean, why participate in a society that doesn't even... And it treats you like you just don't even matter, you know. You, you don't matter, so but participate anyway. Uh, it makes me not want to even participate socially. Um, it's just very isolating. You know, I turn to online platforms like making this video where I can at least go on record publicly and leave a testimony, you know, of how I feel about it. Um, and it'll mostly be ignored in a sea of testimonies that also get ignored. It's, uh, it's just become so easy to ignore people now. Uh, in an age when, you know, we're all told that connections cost so much, you know. I mean, it's as easy as changing the channel. You know, people feel like they're investing too much when they connect with another human being. Um... And that's just what it's turned into. Uh, there's just no nowhere to turn for support. And there's no way to undo the harm. And so I have to teach myself to accept it. Well, I, I just don't want to accept it. I, I simply don't want to accept it. I don't want to somehow deny or invalidate myself so that everyone else can be okay with it. It feels like the worst lie and I'm being told to believe it for everyone else's benefit. You know, it's, it, 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 it serves everyone else for me to believe the lie. One of the most difficult things uh, to listen to is the opinions of women on the subject, uh, especially those that are for circumcision. For some reason, <clears throat> it seems like their opinions matter more, and that really bothers me. It's like women have uh, somehow granted themselves some kind of authority or self-appointed approval power over male anatomy in order to gain control over how men feel about themselves through the lens of female acceptance, you know? Uh, this allows women to secretly uh, celebrate that you can do anything to a man and he will still love women because of how men hate being rejected by women, you know? I mean, it's no secret that women like men who demonstrate a resilience or, you know, a high level of survivability. Because women basically choose who has the most courageous attitude or, uh, you know, they choose the guy who has somehow overcome the odds. And that promotes their own survivability. It, it just adds this unnecessary component of complexity you know, between men and women to the subject of circumcision. And it just, it focuses more on women than the men it actually affects. I've heard uh, a lot of women say that uncircumcised penises are ugly, and, and including my own mother. That was one of the reasons why she said she had me cut was because uncircumcised penises are ugly. That's what she said to me. Uh, despite the fact that she married two guys who were uncircumcised. It's just very hypocritical to hear a woman make these sexist remarks about circumcision or just male anatomy in general uh, when they would never allow that uh, to be a, a, a valid argument in regards to their own anatomy, you know? Uh, I don't see how a woman's critical ideals or critical ideas, rather, about male anatomy and aesthetics are even relevant unless uh, they're promoting a man's, you know, natural body. 
I just don't see how it's relevant. Whenever I hear these sexist comments and opinions, uh, I don't feel like I have a, a right to my own body and that I'm thought of as flawed for my natural physical being. You know, and it, it, it sends a message that just says nature made a mistake when it when it didn't make a mistake. Um, you know, there's a lot of people online who've posted, you know, many videos of uh, actual circumcisions and opinions on circumcision, their opinions. And I think to myself, <clears throat> this is like watching a rape, like a televised rape or something. And I make it a point not to listen to women that support circumcision because of how they go out of their way to uh, try to make men hate themselves or associate indifference to men. You know, it kind of provokes this, you know, uh, how can you not feel anything? You know, uh, you just want to scream at them and say, how can you not feel anything? How can you be so indifferent? You know, uh, and I think it's designed to provoke people. You know, it's just provocative or sensationalized in, in that sense, you know, in order to get men angry. Uh, and it works, you know, it works. Um, the comment sections of all those videos are just filled with comments about God and religion or medicine and statistics and all the excuses that go with it. I mean, it's, it's very rare to find support or empathy. And so I know this video is not going to uh, have any different effect. Um, but I do commend the men and women out there that uh, don't think circumcision is a right of choice for parents and religion. And, you know, they actively advocate on behalf of boys. I actually, I commend them for that. Um, here in the United States, we're supposed to have, you know, equal protection under the law, and we, we clearly operate from double standards when it comes to circumcision. Um, girls are protected and boys are not, and there's no escaping that double standard. I don't believe that girls should be included in circumcision in order to even things up to make a single standard out of it. Um, but if parents exercise the choice to mutilate their girls, uh, there would be an well, we have laws against it. We have the Female Genital Mutilation Act, uh, uh, which only passed, by the way, because they took boys off the legislation. We actually, boys were on that legislation. It wouldn't pass uh, until they took boys off. It's just, it, it just continues to go on. I mean, society knows that this is wrong. I, I'm absolutely convinced of that. They, they know. Uh, and that's why I just can't forgive it. Uh, I can't forgive uh, because in so doing, it, it's like life will go on and people will conclude that men eventually get over it and so it's okay. You know, it'll be a way for them to rationalize uh, circumcision as okay. And I disagree with that. Um, it's, it's true that I have to live with circumcision and I'm powerless to do anything about it. But, uh, you know... I mean, I just, there's nothing I can do about it. That's, that's just a fact, you know? But it doesn't mean I have to be okay with it. Doesn't mean I have to forgive it. Doesn't mean I have to accept it, you know? I'll tell you what, let what I'm about to say next really sink in. Circumcision has, has taught me a very sad truth about people and the world we live in. When a man has suffered circumcision, he thinks that because he still feels something or because he can have an orgasm, that he's experiencing the fullness of what he was meant to experience. But in fact, he's only operating from a mutilated fraction of what he was meant to experience. Similarly, I truly believe that the world has suffered an emotional circumcision. Empathy has been cut away from the human body of emotions, where we are most sensitive. 
And because people still feel something that resembles empathy, they think, they think that they are operating from the fullness of what they were meant to experience. When in fact, it's only a mutilated fraction. Take care. Thank you.